Colonel or Major or high post he was. And we discussed. He was caring for the people of Kashmir. Later on, he comes to Maharashtra, he comes to Bombay. He wants to meet me. He calls me to the Raj Bhavan, the governor's house. I go and meet there. He tells Dr. Zakir Naik, you know, the impact that you had in Kashmir, the people that follow you, we want you to come again. We want you to come on the television of Kashmir. We want to come on the radio. But what my question is, that do you think my talk will be effective? I know that there is not a single verse in the Quran which justifies the killing of innocent human beings. There is not a single saying, a hadith of the Prophet, that you can kill innocent human beings even if they belong to the same community that are an injustice to you. I know that. I can speak. But imagine if thousands of innocent Muslims are being harassed. The police, they tell us that most probably it's a hand of the L.E.T. Lakshay Toiba. For sake of argument, I agree with it. And the police tells us that the local hand should be involved, otherwise the bomb blast can't take place. I agree with it. Imagine the Lashkar Tohiba if they're involved, if you interrogate a thousand innocent human beings, they get ready-made recruits. Ready-made. You torture them, ready-made recruits. Isn't the police helping the Lashkar Tohiba? I'm sorry, please don't get me wrong. I don't want them to misunderstand me, otherwise they'll come to arrest me also. What signals are you sending? Imagine if I agree with you that your theory is correct, that Lashkar e Tohiba is involved and them on local hands, you should get the Muslim in confidence. You can't round up a thousand innocent Muslims. We know, we understand that getting the culprits is very difficult, especially because the bomb blast was done with precision, with accuracy. It was a mastermind, according to the police. We know it is difficult. We understand your case, but that doesn't mean in the name of interrogation you pick up a few innocent people, we can understand. But thousands, what message are you sending? Do you think my lecture will be effective? Maybe I will be able to convince 2, 3 percent, 5 percent, not more than that. So we have to solve the problem. What is the root problem? And the police should get the confidence of the citizens. If that is not there, how will they be able to stop terrorism? And if you want respect, you should give respect. There were good policemen also, many of my friends who are advocates and lawyers, they told me that there were good policemen who helped the people when they were harassed. Some of the policemen had a very good heart. They helped them, they supported them. But generally, oh, you have a beard. Why do you have a beard? Oh, you have towels above the ankle. Why do you keep it? Wearing a cap. As though it is mentioned in the rule book, a terrorist should have a beard, should have towels above the ankle and a cap, then I would be number one terrorist. Even I have my towels above the ankle, I am wearing a cap and I have a beard. What signals are you sending? There should be a proper training, a proper understanding of the religion of Islam. That's what William, when he advised, he told the US government that you don't know Islam. George Bush doesn't know Islam at all. It was an article that came yesterday in the midday. He doesn't know. Unless you don't understand, how will you be able to solve the problem? I don't want the police to misunderstand me. When I tell the Muslims that killing innocent people is wrong, though many Muslims may disagree with me, Quran condemns it. Our Prophet condemned it. Killing any innocent human being, you can't justify it. I have to speak the truth. At the same time, I even have to speak the truth to the police force. I hope they understand the situation. And according to Julio Ribeiro, he writes an article in Hindustan Times, I think it was the 9th of September. He says that more the unnecessary arrests that are made to get a breakthrough becomes more difficult proportionately. The more unnecessary people you arrest, the chances you get at the real culprit is more difficult. On the 2nd of September 2006, there was a good gesture by the police commissioner of Bombay, A. N. Roy. He wrote a personal letter to a couple of hundred Muslim leaders saying that the investigation is unbiased, we aren't harassing the Muslims. I too received one of these letters. And he said that if there is any query, any question, we can come and sit across the table, we can talk. It's a good gesture. The letter came recently, just maybe a week back. I only hope it is not a theoretical exercise of public relations. If it's practically implemented that innocent Muslims should not be harassed. If you really want to get the confidence, 
You see to it that you get the confidence of the Muslims. And then only you will be really able to catch the culprits. And if you get the culprits, whoever they are, surely they have to be punished. We know the authorities, they tell us that why majority Muslims have been picked up. And the argument given was that when we analyze that in Punjab terrorism, majority people arrested, they were sick. In Ulfa, in Assam, majority were Hindus. In Tamil Nadu LTT, they were Hindus. So, but naturally in Bombay, because you know we think it's linked with Pakistan Kashmir, it will be Muslims. I agree with you for sake of argument. If a terrorist attack is done in Punjab, the majority of people living in Punjab are sick. So if majority six are arrested, it is logical. In Assam, majority are Hindus, so if Hindus are arrested, it is logical. In Tamil Nadu, majority of people living are Hindus, so Hindus are arrested, logical. In Bombay, are the majority of people living Muslims? The Muslims are minority. So why are they being picked up in majority? If you think it's an act of Kashmir militant, if you have got accords, we have got no doubt with that. But do you mean to say the LTT can't come to Bombay? Do you mean to say Ulfa can't come to Bombay? Do you mean to say six states can't come to Bombay? You cannot say 100% this act of being Muslim. You can say high possibilities. And if you show proof, we are with you. What we are trying to tell you that identify the people who are responsible, catch them and punish them. But not thousands of people, innocent Muslims being rounded up. We know there are several records. Just a couple of months back, according to the ATS of Maharashtra, 16 members were arrested from a hardcore Hindu organization. They were involved in three bomb blasts in mosques. Mamadi Mosque in Parbani, one of the mosques in Jalna, one in Puna, three. And recently on 6th of April, in one place, by mistake, a bomb detonates. By mistake. While they were making a bomb, it exploded. It killed four people and 11 were injured. When inquiries were made, many people belonged to the same hardcore Hindu organization. And they found there that the plan was that to attack the mosque in the guise of Sikh. You know, this took place in Nandit. Sikh, why? Because there was a rift going on between the Muslims and Sikh. A Sikh girl married a Muslim boy. So there was tension. So they wanted to get advantage. So they wanted to do an act in the guise of Sikh. There are cases we know that Hindus have attacked wearing caps and beards. So you can't say 100% Muslims are involved. Maybe high possibilities. I'm not saying no. Recently, a few days back, on Friday, 8th of September, four bomb blasts took place in Malika. One outside one of the mosques, one outside a graveyard, in which 35 innocent Muslims were killed and more than 100 innocent Muslims were injured. Again, prime suspect, L.E.T. Can be, but not prime. Imagine, it is a game plan. It's a no name game. If you go to America, it's Al Qaeda. Here it is LET. According to an article that came in the DNA on the 6th of September, a person by the name of Joseph, he writes that the foreign experts they tell that if you involve yourself too much in the blame game, you lose focus and the main culprits are never caught. You do a proper investigation. If really they are caught, they have to be punished. Irrespective whether the terrorists are Muslims or non-Muslims, whether they belong to Kashmir, whether to Pakistan, whether Ulfa, whether LTT, if they are proved to be involved in that, they should be punished. I am not here to support any terrorist act, not at all. But if you want to get to the bottom of it, you should know that this should be done meticulously. We should take the citizens in confidence. One of the other cause is the media. Mainly that media which is controlled by the politicians. We have to be careful of this. And this media, they can convert black to white, day to night, hero into a villain, villain into hero. And we see that very often. If you see my tapes, I have given very such examples. But in India, it's fortunate that the more popular 